Alrighty, today we're going to be doing a couple things to improve your winter boondocking experience by increasing your solar harvest. Uh, as you notice, the sun gets lower in the winter, and there's not as many daylight hours, so your solar charging can really take a hit. So we're going to angle our panels, and we're going to add a portable panel and uh, get some readings off of both those before we do the changes and after we do the changes. And for reference, uh, I'm running 600 watts of solar on the roof with 100 watts of portable uh, solar panel that I put on the ground. I have two 100 amp hour batteries and using the uh, Victron uh, battery management system and charge controller. Um, that's worked pretty good for me. I've only used my propane generator a handful of times in the last year and a half. Uh, for one person, I, I guess I'm a above average electricity consumer. I've got a 24 inch monitor. I'm charging drone batteries all the time, camera batteries. I'm running my laptop. I'm processing audio files. So, um, I'm sure there's people out there with hair dryers and microwaves and everything else that use a lot more juice than I do. But uh, I consider myself a little on the heavy end and uh, the system that I have has, has provided just fine. I've got a 25 foot trailer and it was able to accommodate 600 watts pretty easy. So uh, just to give you some ballpark measurements in case you know, you're know you putting your rig together. and and trying to figure out what you need to get and how much you need. It, it's really confusing when you're starting out and people are telling you to buy a kilowatt and start measuring all your appliances. And I mean, that helps, but um, you know, in a nutshell, I use about 80 to 100 watts per hour. And you just figure out you don't want to use more than 50% of your, your battery bank in case the next day it's cloudy. Or if you're using AGM, you never want to go below 50% anyways. So those are just some uh, rough estimates to kind of get you in the ballpark if you're heading out and, and thinking about buying a solar charging system. Okay, one thing I like to do whenever I'm doing this sort of thing is uh, just get a pair of gloves. And uh, I like these uh, Gorilla Grip. They're pretty good, not expensive. They're good for hitching up as well. And if you're interested, I'll, I'll put a link for those down below. And uh, I'm using the Victron uh, charge controller and battery management system. So I can access all that via my cell phone here. And let's see. Okay, let's get a baseline here before we do any changes. And yeah, it looks like we're running right around 210, 211. And that's with all the panels flat and no portable panel. So uh, let's get going in here and see what kind of improvements we can make. So here's what's involved with tilting your solar panel. Assuming you have rigid panels like these, you just undo one side and you just tilt it up with a piece of aluminum stock and uh, it's got a couple holes in it. Now some, some solar places will sell that uh, tilt arm, um, which is convenient, but you just end up being, paying like two to three times as much. You can get aluminum stock off of Amazon and uh, drill your own holes and, and you could save yourself some money there. Okay, let's see what we're running with one panel tilted. Looks like we're right about 242, 243. And we were at, I believe, 211. So um, it's not a bad little bump from tilting the panel. Let's uh, go ahead and tilt another one. Okay, now we got two panels tilted and we're up to about uh, well, 286, 290. 
So we started out at 211, and then we got a bump up to uh, 243. Now we're sitting up at about 290. Uh, so that's a pretty good gain on just tilting two panels. Uh, now let's uh, deploy a portable panel and see what kind of gains we can get from that. have the 100 watt portable Reno G solar panel and those come with or without a charge controller. I opted to get the one with no charge controller because I'm running this 10 gauge wire with Anderson connectors uh, straight into my charge controller in the trailer. So to deploy this I just need to grab my cable and plug this in we got extra solar panels let's go see what kind of readings we got okay I think before we were right around 290 and now we're up to 345 uh, that seems a little low to me um, I think it might be because we have some cloud cover so there we go bouncing up a little bit um, I would expect that we could get a good 80 watts out of that panel on a day like today. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and check back in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to check back on this and I just had it reading about 380 a minute ago. So uh, that's more in line with what my expectations were. Uh, there we go, there's 380. I'll put a link uh, for this panel in the description if you're interested. I attempted to make this video yesterday when it was overcast and when I tilted the panel there wasn't any increase in the charging rate and well that kind of defeated the whole purpose of the video so I bailed on that and I was thinking about that last night and I think it's because the clouds diffuse the light so if you tilt your panels it's overcast and you don't see any big increase don't get frustrated it's probably just because of the clouds so in about 20 minutes we were able to go from I believe that we started out at 211 and ended upwards of uh, 380 um, by just tilting a couple panels and deploying that uh, portable panel so anyways pretty good way to increase your solar harvest if you're out here in the winter time and uh, you're doing some boondocking so i hope that i uh, hope that helps out and if you have any questions uh, please leave those in the comments thank you